The coloring we use is uh, caramel coloring, um, and this is actually uh, D. D. Wilson, um, uh, excuse me, D. D. Williamson, um, and uh, this is, again is a professional level coloring uh, agent. This is a sample they gave us and has lasted us about two years, um, and that's several batches. Blah blah. blah. Um, you can probably just use the color, caramel coloring you can find at uh, Gordon Foods. All our other uh, colorings uh, is, is Gordon Food coloring. Um, uh, so if you don't have a Gordon Foods around you, uh, try some other food supply store, uh, cake and candy stores, just some sort of coloring. Uh, this is caramel coloring, um, which is that distinctive brownish cola color. Uh, you can't really get that any other way. Uh, essentially, it's burnt sugar is all caramel coloring is. Um, this is highly, highly concentrated. I am going to stain my fingers no matter how hard I try, and whatever it touches, it stains pretty good. Clean it up right away. Uh, some people wear rubber gloves at this point. I don't really care. Um, so what if my fingers get stained? Uh, so we're going to need 1.5 teaspoons of this for a full five gallons. Divide by 10, uh, that's 0.15 teaspoons. Um, so we're going to put, uh, so it's really hard to color uh, this small of a quantity. And usually we're just doing a test batch. Uh, we don't normally color at this size, but I'm going to show you the color. Uh, I'm going to again, uh, so um, a fourth is 0.25, so I'm going to make this about an eighth. Um, it's going to be really hard to do just an eighth, but I think I can, get, I can manage it. So let's see here. Pretty much what I get on the spoon is going to be enough to color this. Uh, a little bit more here, I think. It's almost a fourth. There we go. It's about a half of a fourth. This should be pretty good right here. Um, I'm actually going to fill up another container and uh, mix it into the other container. And uh, if you can see this, it's turning really brown really quickly. Try to get it all off as much as possible here. all the way and uh, we're going to dump this in here and you can pretty much see the uh, the color change on the uh, the cola right away uh, we're going to add some more water in that get that more mixed up here now So there we go. That's pretty good. Uh, that's colored pretty good. Uh, you can see it already looks like it's carbonated because of the foaming agent. Uh, I'm going to mix this up a little bit more here. And uh, now the color looks pretty good. It's a little light. I, I should have put a little bit more, uh, but that's okay. For test batch size, this looks pretty good. Uh, people will know it's cola, and uh, it even looks like cola, doesn't it? So let's pour out a little bit and see how it tastes here. Um, I usually, with a test batch size, pour a little bit out, see how it tastes. I actually prefer myself uh, uncarbonated pop. Uh, I, I frankly don't know why people started putting the carbonation in there, but uh, they do. Uh, I pour a little bit out just to taste it, see how, it's, see how it does. And then uh, then we have some more room for the, uh, the CO2. So I'm going to squeeze out all the air we can. Oops, this is actually the wrong, the wrong top. Hold on one second. So this is the top we actually want to put on here. It's a, uh, a little top that allows us to carbonate it, uh, screws right on top here. I'll explain more about this in a second when we carbonate. So squeeze all the air out, put this on, and voila. So let's give it a taste, see how it tastes here. So there we go. Little, little light, little light. I uh, should have put a little bit more coloring in there, that's okay. Let's see how it tastes. <sighs> that's delicious. Here we are at the carbonation step, and we've got our... Uh, carbonated top on the 2 liter and we've got our tank of CO2. Now we, again, I keep talking about the 5 gallon size, we push about 8 kegs uh, at events uh, about 4 times a year. So we actually go through about 2 cylinders of CO2 a, a year and uh, we have uh, several rigs uh, to dispense from which I will show you on another video. Uh, today we're just doing the test batch size and uh, so we have 
um, uh, all these different connections for, for pushing CO2. Uh, that's why we got the, uh, the, uh, the nozzle here, uh, so that we can quickly carbonate uh, CO2 uh, 2 liters. Uh, so we've got a, uh, this is called a ball and lock um, connector for the CO2 side uh, that plugs into the uh, Cornelius kegs uh, ball and lock. Uh, this was designed specifically for putting this on here. Um, so uh, the ball and keg, uh, the ball and lock kegs are actually uh, uh, not used especially in the, the soda industry anymore, uh, but used a lot by homebrew beer companies. So uh, we actually find uh, all this stuff uh, at homebrew uh, beer supply stores, um, and uh, you can look up your local one. I'm sure uh, they can. Uh, they might have all the stuff for you. Uh, we get our CO2 from the homebrew store um, and uh, all the other parts. They can either have or order. Uh, for us, uh, they uh, we tell them we push uh, you know <laughs> uh, several kegs uh, at an event, and they're like, "Hey, what's the address? We want to show up." And they're like, "This is soda. This is soda." And they're like, "What? You make your own soda?" A lot of people uh, haven't you know a lot of people have accepted the home brew beer, uh, but a lot not a lot of people uh, understand the whole concept of, of home brew soda. Um, uh, but pretty much the same technology. Uh, you just have to realize that soda pushes. At, uh, at about 55 psi, where beer pushes at about 5 psi, uh, so you need high pressure hoses. Uh, the the ball and uh, lock uh, are designed for the high pressure, so those are fine. And you can't use brass because the uh, the acid in the the soda will eat brass. So plastic um, or uh, or metal, uh, steel, uh, no no brass. Uh, so here we go. Let's. This is going to take uh, just a quick second. And uh, it actually, you got to press kind of hard to get it on in there. So I now have it connected. You see it instantly push back up. And uh, let's shake, shake it around a little bit more. As you shake it, you can actually hear uh, uh, the CO2 escaping from the cylinder into here. Uh, and then you shake it a little bit more. Actually, I need to get this on a little tighter. I got a little bit of liquid coming out on me. Uh, shake it up more. You hear more CO2. So just keep shaking it until you don't hear CO2 coming out anymore. And that's how you know you have uh, uh, enough uh, uh, dissolved into the liquid. And um, uh, you actually want to keep it on its side. The more surface area you have, the, uh, the quicker it will dissolve in there. So again, pressure and cold is what helps you uh, carbonate the CO2. I'm here still hearing it leaking a little bit. Um, we should be okay. Again, test batch size uh, should be okay. You can see we already have some, some, uh, some foam, some fizz up, up here. So. Uh, we'll disconnect this, and uh, because it's the ball and lock, it stays uh, still stays locked and fuzzy. Okay, so now that we have our CO2 uh, 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 dissolved into our soda, let's give it a go here. It's going to be really pressurized when you first open it up here. I'll just make sure it doesn't foam over. And there you go, That uh, you get that distinctive pop fizz there. So, there we go. That's pop, isn't it? Got a nice foaming head there, got some nice fizz. So this is a great way of uh, making your own pop, knowing what's in it, making your own flavors. Uh, we have many different flavors. We make bubblegum uh, diet. It's easy to make diet. Uh, you either just replace with Splenda. One cup of Splenda is one cup of sugar. Uh, we have the measurements up on the site. Um, or make it half and half. Um, and uh, you can make any flavor you want. Uh, it's even pretty good without any oils at all. Uh, just without oils. We call it Dev uh, Development and uh, it tastes pretty good. Um, it, a lot of people like it because it doesn't have high fructose corn syrup. So hey, fun little hobby and after you're done you can drink it. it tastes good. So there you are. How to make home brew cola. Uh, um, It'll cost you a little bit to, uh, to get all the stuff to start up with, but once you start up, you should have some fun with it. Again, remember, opensoda.org, and uh, let us know if you make anything good.